Well, welcome to day 23 of uh, extension to a question a day. Here we've got a couple of uh, equations, Cartesian equations of lines uh, in 3D, uh, like vector equations of lines. We're going to find the value of k for which uh, these two lines intersect and therefore find the point of intersection. And then we're going to find the acute angle between them. So from uh, this is line L1, first of all. From line L1, I can see that x minus 1 on k equals, let me call it lambda. And y on minus 1 is also equal to lambda. And z plus 3 on 1 is also equal to lambda. So I can re-express this that x is equal to k lambda plus 1 and y is equal to minus lambda, and z is equal to uh, lambda minus 3. So I can re-express those. Now, the same with line L2. Um, let's get a different colour pen. L2, this says that uh, x minus 4 on 1 equals, let's say, t. We've got to pick some uh, number. Um, then uh, y plus 3 on 1 equals t, and z plus 3 on 2 equals t. So I can re-express them with their x, y, and z, right? So x equals t plus 4, and y equals t minus 3, and z is equal to uh, 2t minus 3. And now... Um, I can find the value of k for which these lines intersect because um, if I just put the x values equal to each other, then this, uh, this k lambda plus 1 right, must be equal to this t plus 4. All right, that that must be the case. Now, um, when I look up, uh, let's have just have another look back up here. Is it t plus four? Yep. Okay. Um, I also have that. This minus lambda is uh, equal to, for the y's, is equal to this uh, t minus 3. And I also have that um, this lambda minus 3 is equal to... Um, 2t minus 3. So I've got those three situations there that I know to be true if there is a point of intersection. I know that that and that and that. It's consistent. Those three sets of equations do work. So I will, I will now solve these two which I'll get a solution for because I've got two equations with two unknowns. And then I'll know that solution is a true solution because they're telling me there will be a point of intersection. So it's got to be consistent as a solution to the, the, equa the other equation. I'll put it in there and it will reveal the value of k. So let's solve these two simultaneously. I mean, lambda is equal to... Uh, uh, minus t plus 3, 3 minus t, right? Just from that, lambda is equal to 3 minus t. So that's what I'm going to put in here. So I've got 3 minus t minus 3 equals 2t minus 3. So 3 minus 3 is nothing. So I've got minus t equals 2t minus 3. So add to uh, sub subtract 2t off both sides, get minus 3t equals minus 3. So t is 1. T is 1. And therefore, lambda, which is 3 minus T, is 3 minus 1. Lambda is 2. Now, I know that the um, equations, I know that it's a... Uh, uh, 
sorry, I know that it's a consistent situation. So let's just add in a couple of extra pages. Dun, dun. Okay, I know it's a consistent situation. So I can go back and pop into k lambda plus one equals t plus four. I can pop those values that are found over there. So t is one, lambda is two. So two k plus one equals five, two k equals four. So k is equal to two. So I've found the value of k which the, for which there is an intersection because it'll make a set of simultaneous equations that are consistent. And now it just says, well, okay, what is the point of intersection? So in this one up here, uh, I can find the x value in either the green or the red. So I'll use the green, right? x is t plus 4. I'll just write this down. x is t plus 4. y is... Uh, t minus 3 for that, and z is uh, 2t minus 3. So I could have used the red one or this green one. Now, I know what t is. t is 1. So x is 1 plus 4, y is 1 minus 3, and z is 2 times 1 minus 3. So x is 5 y is minus 2 and z is negative 1. So the point of intersection is 5, negative 2, negative 1. All right. Now what's the final question? What's the acute angle between L1 and L2? All right, I'm going to write um, the equations in the, the following format. I'm going to write L1 as like x, y, z equals something plus lambda something. And there's the direction vector. And I'm going to write L2 in the same way. Right? Plus t times that. So I'll just go and read those off. Right? Uh, X is, uh, now K was equal to what, 2? Yeah, so uh, in this first uh, red bit of writing, X is 2 lambda plus 1, right? X is 1 plus 2 lambda. And... Y is just minus lambda, so it's just minus 2, so nothing and minus 2 lambda. And K is, in this first one, it's lambda minus 3, so minus 3 plus 1 lambda. Right? And then for line L2, it's uh, T plus 4, so 4 plus 1 T. And it's t minus 3, so it's minus 3 plus 1t. And it's 2t minus 3. So, all right. Now, you can read those directly off the um, original, the way they've written the original equations as well, like the 4 minus 3 minus 3 on the top line, just reverse the signs of, of, of this guy, you get 4 minus 3 minus 3, and on the bottom you've got 1, 1, 2. So you can just read that directly off. All right, why would I do that? Because the acute angle between the lines is it's going to be given by the angle between the direction vectors, right? We want the angle between um, the direction vectors to get it, which is the same as the angle you know, between the two lines. So um, our direction vectors are these guys here. 
direction vectors. So we want the angle between those two different vectors. And we're going to do the dot product in the two different ways, right? We're going to do the dot product um, by going uh, the size of the first vector times the size, I call that vector A, times this, whoops, <laughs> writing it on top. The size of, let's say, vector um, A times the size of vector B times cos of the angle between them equals, and then we're going to do it by component form, like A1 times B1 plus A2 times B2 plus A3 times B3. All right. So, you know, in in what I've got written down there, that's like A1, A2, A3, and that's like B1, B2, B3. And um, this that's to, I'm calling that A and that B in my notation, right, for those direction vectors. So A is 2 minus 2, 1. And B is 1, 1, 2. So let's do that dot product that I've got written down there in those two different ways. The, the size of A is the square root of 2 squared and 2 squared and 1 squared. The size of B is the square root of 1 squared and 1 squared and 2 squared. And we've got cos theta. We, we, we don't know what that is. We're trying to find theta. And then this is 2 by 1 plus minus 2 by 1 plus 1 by 2. So 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9, root 9 is 3, 3 times 3 times cos theta. Whoa, whoa, whoa. garbage. And rush it. 4 plus 1 is 5 plus 1. That's root 6. So that's root 6. All right, just going to check on these. 2 minus 2, 1. Have I got that correct? Um, 1, 0, minus 3, and 2 minus 2, 1. I'm just checking back on my uh, 1, 0, minus 3, 2, minus 1, 1. So where do I get minus 2 from for that vector? So it's important to write these down properly. Where... Did I get minus 2 from here? I'm just checking that out now. And it's because I'm scrolling up and down, I know. But am I saying that y is equal to minus 2 lambda? Let's go up there for line 1. No, there was no k there. That's My error was I was trying to substitute in. I thought It's just y equals minus lambda. So that's a minus 1. All right. So I'm going back here and I'm just fixing that up. I'm... Fixing, I'm fixing that up so I've written it properly and you probably already noticed that if you were working this through. You're like, hang on, he's got that wrong. That should be minus one there, right? That vector should have been two minus one, one. In which case that affects this and it affects where you do this. I need to put a one, one squared there, and it's two times one, and it's minus one times one, and it's one times two, and that's gonna make this root six times root six. So sorry, but at least I've picked up that error. All right. So that's 6 cos theta, uh, 2 minus 1 plus 2, 4 minus 1 is 3. So cos theta equals 3, oh, it makes it so easy, doesn't it, right? Because cos theta is a half, it says acute angle, so theta equals 60 degrees. So there we go.